Thanks so much for that, Kate. Time to move on to the main segment of tonight's show, where we get to chat to Peter Zing, who's a dear friend, uh, and we got a lot of history through our Singularity University uh, adventures. Peter is the co-founder of Transhumanism Coin and Transhumanism Australia, and works as a digital and data solutions lead at KPMG on transformation initiatives in AR, automation, and the metaverse. Peter is a Singularity Group expert on transhumanism and emerging technologies, as well as part of the advisory committee at Wavia. And then also, I'm proud to say that Transhumanism Coin is an early settler in Ubuntu land and busy building out their village. Peter, great to be with you today, uh, all the way from Australia. Thanks so much, Vic. Yeah, it's awesome to be here. Tell us a little bit about this concept of transhumanism and the transhumanism movement. I think it's, you know, some people get quite um, bewildered by the, by, the, by the name and by the concept. Uh, do you want to break it down for us a little bit? Yeah, sure. I mean, transhumanism is such a loaded term, uh, but it's really a movement that's been around since the 70s. You know, after we had the moon landing, everyone was looking to the future around what sci-fi could be created into, you know, reality. And the, essentially the movement looks at how do we increase our healthy lifespan? How do we transcend the limitations of our human biology through science and technology? And the people really just want to live longer and healthier and also looking at accelerating artificial intelligence so that we could one day merge with AI, looking at brain computer interfaces and uploading our consciousness to the cloud, you know, digital immortality. And so all these science fiction types of concepts are now becoming more and more tangible as these breakthroughs in, in medicine and in and material science. And we see projects like Neuralink from Elon Musk starting to really push those boundaries and merging AI with our understanding of the brain. And ultimately, it's all about how do we improve well-being for everyone to also make sure no one gets left behind, that the technology is being used for good and the well-being of humanity. Um, and that's where we look at things like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, creating universal basic income. And that's why cryptocurrency, which is a movement that we've got right now with Transhuman Coin, sort of tries to bridge that gap to make it all come to real. I love it. I love it. It's, uh, you know, what's, what's really great is that it's got so much positivity built into it. And it's really looking at the future from a scientific point of view. And how do we make people's lives better uh, through science and through technology? And I mean, all of those uh, things you just mentioned, there's so much we can dive into. Maybe let's just talk a bit about uh, human longevity and improving our, our lifespan. You know, what are some of the things you're seeing at the moment that are really exciting you in the space? Yeah, I mean, I love the fact that uh, with human longevity, you know, it's something that everyone is going to be able to, have to essentially go through, right? Healthy lifespans, improving not only as you age, but also making sure that we age gracefully and healthily. Um, there's, there's been trials now done on mice, but also going through human clinical trials of certain drugs, like using NAD to essentially remove things like senescent cells out of our bodies and looking at these precursors to things that fix our cells as they replicate. And those drugs are actually enhancing and increasing the healthy lifespan by 30% in these mice. And I'm really excited to see these projects that are doing human clinical trials now to accelerate that research. And we're seeing uh, technologies like CRISPR gene editing to really look at not only a whole genome sequencing around understanding uh, what our DNA does, but really being able to edit that to cure genetic diseases, but eventually find ways to uh, transcend those limitations of our human biology of bridging that cap that we currently have of around 120 or so years. So really exciting technology for human longevity, and uh, it's only going to get better from here. I mean, also, have you been, have you, uh, I've been following a lot of Dave Sinclair, um, and, you know, I just recently read his book, Lifespan. Mm. Um, it's pretty amazing to think about the fact that, you know, you can actually start working towards reversing your aging. Uh, and there's multiple ways of doing that. And, you know, he talks about this drug, I think it's called R&M. Have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, that's right. And NMN as well. NMM, sorry, NM, NMM. <laughs> that's what I, I yeah, hmm. NMN. And um, NMM actually is, a, it's been around since, only since the 2017s, around that, so a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, you know, he, he, he thinks it definitely reverses your aging. 
Yeah, that's right. And that's the sort of the human clinical trials right now. And, um, you know, it's great that he takes that himself as well. Like it's sort of, you know, he's a biohacker in that sense. Um, And, you know, there's already sort of a a group of biohackers that are documenting how they're experiencing on this NMN, the precursor to NAD, you know, boosting the sort of ability for our cells to clean every time they replicate. Um, and that's sort of really seeing, I'm, I'm on that as well. And I see. Are you taking you know, him? Are you taking Yeah, him? that's right. Oh, you know, wow. You are looking a bit younger. I thought you were looking a bit younger. Yeah, that's right. It's either the Asian genes, I'm sure we can edit into others as well, but also <laughs> taking some <laughs> of this as well. Um, but yeah, I think that evidence-based approach to it, um, getting more and more of these trials in the, in the works. But the fact that, you know, he's a Harvard University, also um, an Australian at the University of New South Wales. Um, these are sort of things that really brings the credibility to this entire movement. Um, and you got the likes of Aubrey de Grey, uh, who uh, my co-founder Charles Woozy was meeting also over in, uh, in uh, Sun City in, uh, yeah, in, in South that. Africa. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah they're essentially, he's also looking at okay, the holistic approaches to uh, you know, human longevity. So what are the causes of aging? Um, not just you know, at the cellular level, um, you know, as we biodegrade, senescence, these zombie cells in our bodies, trying to remove them is another approach. Um, and also, you know, modern, modern science and modern healthcare replacing various parts of our bodies that might have broken down, whether that's organs, transplantation, being able to genetically engineer, you know, pigs, for example, to help replace that and uh, do um, liver transplants for humans. Like these are the sort of things that I think uh, going towards the last mile, right, of trying to extend that lifespan as we come up across these issues, modern technology will get better and better and try to find ways to sort of improve that process. Yeah, I mean, just so that everyone knows, Aubrey de Grey is probably one of the leading experts in uh, life, extending our lifespan. Mm. And uh, he came up with the term longevity escape velocity, that point when we, we are gaining a year on our uh, life expectancy every year, uh, ultimately, you know, allowing us to live indefinitely uh, mm. and then replacing our parts with his, his sense system he's working on. Yeah. Uh, and he's yeah. got this long, long beard. Uh, he almost looks <laughs> like uh, Father Christmas, the, you know, quite yeah. a, quite interesting character. <laughs> yeah, definitely got the Lord of the Rings vibes. And, uh, you know, I think it's great to be able to sort of see him, you know, working with the whole transhumanist community. We had uh, Dr. Natasha Vidamore there, who's been there since the start of the movement, right? And uh, she was there in Sun City, working with uh, also Jose and Cadero. I so, saw uh, Jose, part of yeah, yeah. He's also part well. of our Singularity alumni, yes. Yeah, it's just, just an amazing community and uh, the fact that sort of there's such a mission-driven approach to this that everyone wants to be, you know, bring this movement and now bring this movement and spread it in Africa through Transhuman Coin is something that's really rewarding. <laughs> that's what's happening all here. Yeah, it's really incredible. And, uh, you know, moving a little bit onto now Transhuman Coin, do you want to just tell us a little bit about what is Transhuman Coin? Uh, what are you trying to do with it? What's the mission? How does it work? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's um, yeah. So when we were doing transhumanism locally here, we were trying to find ways to get traction for the community. It started off as just meetup groups and you know educating people about you know the latest and greatest in science and technology that accelerated the movement. Uh, but we found that we wanted to be able to fund these types of projects directly. And, uh, you know, we couldn't find a way to actually do that without just these meetups. Um, so the best way we looked at at the time was um, actually having a token dedicated to the transhumanism movement. And back in 2017, there was the whole ICO craze. And, you know, we thought about doing it then. But, you know, the technology and the toolkits, you know, weren't quite readily available. So uh, it was last year, about a year ago now, um, that the toolkits were quite you know, well done. And, you know, working with our, my co-founder, uh, Charles, Dr. Charles Woozy, who's a cybersecurity expert, who actually essentially created um, Transhuman Coin for the movement. It was a um, it was a fair launch, really, on uh, the Binance Smart Chain at the time, the BNB chain. Um, and it was something really simple for people to get on board with. Um, the tokenomics was that every transaction on Transhuman Coin, two percent would go to all the holders, including a fund wallet that uh, essentially the scientific advisory board uh, for overseas and be able to fund the research into it. 
So we've been able to fund the likes of Lifespan.io, uh, which is a, a crowdfunding platform for longevity projects that uh, you know uh, David Sinclair has used, and Aubrey de Grey, and all the others have been looking to fund these um, you know animal trials and human clinical trials. Um, we've also funded the likes of uh, Abby by GoGo Tech, which is an electronic wheelchair company that's trying to help the disabled access cheap and affordable wheelchairs that eventually become autonomous. So autonomous personal vehicles that will wow. also have open standards for integration of how to control those wheelchairs, and which means that we'll be in a, in a, to embed things like brain computer interfaces to control those wheelchairs um, on the his sort of new <laughs> mode of transport for personal devices. And uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other projects, you know, funding things like, um, you know, longevity type films to spread the awareness around, you know, we could be the last generation to die. Um, you know, there's some amazing projects out there that we have, really love to talk more about. I mean, it's so exciting uh, just to hear that. And, you know, the, 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 the burst of positive impact that's going to come out of these projects is just uh, extraordinary. You know, just touching on one of those things you just mentioned, the last generation to die. I mean, that's quite a crazy concept to think that mm -hmm. we could all be part of this last generation um, and, and live, you know, indefinitely. And, you know, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, being at a crossroads for an entire generation, think how unlucky or lucky we could be, right? It's sort of, you know, being that sort of uh, um, a crossroads because Tim Morpin, the film director, he's done an amazing job in this, in all this, like the longevity film festivals. Um, he created this uh, a short documentary called Kids and Longevity. And it basically asked you know, lots of, um, you know, young kids around how long do you think people should live? And most of them all said, you know, well, yeah, if I had a choice, I'd live forever, right? But as we get older, that sort of myth gets busted out of us because we know, you know, we get keep getting told that the natural stages of life is that you're born, you grow up, you might have some kids, and then you meant to just, you know, you know, pass away, right? <laughs> grow old and pass away. And that's sort of the natural way of things. But science and technology has got to the point where we can challenge that narrative. And that's what his films are looking to do. You know, how do we actually strive to use science and technology to, to challenge uh, what we're accepting in society today? Fascinating. Huh? Yeah. Imagine uh, living to, you know, a thousand years old and all the things that you could do and the, the amount of knowledge you can learn and experience and, you know, the, the impact you can make on uh, humanity and the universe and the evolution of, of human beings. It's really yeah. a great time to be alive. That's amazing, right? And, you know, just having the option to do that, it's just, it feels like death is such a, you know, a, a forced thing, right? It's sort of like no choice given to it. And, you know, even if you're in a healthy state, you, know, you want to be healthy and living indefinitely until you choose to, you know, up to your own will to, to you know, call it quits. It's a snooze button. <laughs> yeah and i mean uh, 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 what happens if you have a sort of an accident uh and and you pass away would you be able to upload your consciousness to a sort of uh, a, a backup place and then if something happens yeah. to you, you could you know reload your consciousness into another uh, being or something like that uh, or you just live in that... the digital world <laughs> yeah Exactly. I mean, this is sort of stuff that, uh, you know, the altered carbon type, uh, you know, explored where they had upload, backup copies yeah. and exact and upload, you know, for, um, yeah, that's right, from Amazon Prime. And, you know, these sort of things that, you know, people, every time people hear about it, they're like, oh, it's only going to be available for the billionaires. But, you know, you look at technology today, it's that law of accelerating returns, as we all hear from Ray Kurzweil as part of Singularity University. Um, you know, this, this technology will become more and more available and abundant. Um, and so if you think about those technologies to have backups for everyone, right? It's uh, that's the sort of things that we could, we should be asking as a human right to. Um, and not only you know, as we merge closer and closer with AI to decipher what is consciousness in the first place, that's gonna give us open up all those possibilities for us to, to have those backups and prevent. And firstly, also autonomous cars will hopefully will mitigate a lot of those accidents as well. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's the huge eth ethical debate uh, around all of this, and you know, there are lots of for us to, lots of work for humans to do to work out mm. uh, and play out these different scenarios, and um, you know, it's going to be an exciting uh, couple of decades to come for sure. And you know, it's amazing <laughs> to hear that it's enabled by this transhumanism coin. Uh, you yeah. know, you've got something more like you. Know, how many 
uh, people holders do you have at the moment? You've got yeah. thousands of, of transhumanism holders. Yeah, we've got about 15,000 holders right now. And, um, you know, a lot of them are in Africa. I mean, a lot of them are wow. in Nigeria and South Africa. Um, and, um, you know, this is why we sort of funded also the TAF-D conference called Gen4IR, the fourth industrial revolution generation and, and Sun City. Um, and that's the sort of the projects that we really want to spread awareness. And it was great to be able to see um, the, the the crypto first community come together with the transhuman first community, right? It's sort of merging of these concepts. And I think cryptocurrency and Web3 really has that sort of notion of, you know, this decentralization, this concept of, you know, individual ownership and privacy and sense of all, all of that sort of um, decentralized web, the notion that Vitalik and also, you know, the early days of the Bitcoin, uh, early adopters as well, and how Finney. Um, so Web3 is really, I think, a, a platform for transhumanists to really spread the message and, and connect the world. Uh, yeah, maybe we should just quickly just touch on where you see the state of the market at the moment. I mean, it's been, mm. uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, uh, fiery bears out there, mm. um, you know, and, um, you know, for us, it's really about the underlying technology, what, mm. it, you know, looking at the long term and uh, where, where do you see things at the moment? Yeah, I mean, it's an evolving technology and it's gone through these hype cycles and, uh, you know, these crypto winters. But I feel like these are the best times to build that we saw from the last winter in 2017. The toolkits that weren't available back then are available today. And I feel like that mainstream adoption is continuing to gather steam as all the major brands essentially have these NFT projects to create additional revenue streams, but also create a lot of customer loyalty. So they're finding those use cases and finding product market fit in these days. Uh, you know, as the initial hype also created that bubble, but also it created the knowledge and transparency and adoption and understanding of the tech. So the Ghana hype cycle is really true on this, and I feel like we continue to go on that wave. Um, what's going to be really exciting as we have you know the merge coming up as well. That's also yeah. a continual evolution of the tech, trying to find product market fit to scale. Um, and it's going to bring in more institutional adoption, you know, of the underlying tech because people will be able to build on Ethereum more, you know, using Polygon, uh, using other layers uh, through, you know, other sub chains and Polygon network. We're seeing at the ultimate ways of tracking individual assets or goods and services, right? Essentially could become NFTs and tied to those real world assets. Um, you know, working at KPMG, knowing these sort of things around what we do as an audit service, right? All of that should be attested for on the public blockchain. You don't need someone Absolutely. verifying yeah. these on a you know spreadsheet or database or ticking and bashing a lot of things. You know, the blockchain does that for you. And so ultimately, it's getting those ecosystem on board. And I feel like we've still got a long way to go, but those use cases will just become piling up and sure thing will take over the world as well. Awesome, awesome. So you sound pretty bullish there, I would say. <laughs> That's a bullish sound and uh, very positive about the future. And I, and I totally agree with you. It's about really the tools and all the different applications uh, that are built in these winters, you know, that, you know, out of the ashes, you see all these incredible new um products and 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 use cases that uh, people can actually uh engage with so it's a very exciting space and i want to do you know we're all running out of time so just very quickly uh to touch on uh transhumanism coin is coming into ubuntu land you 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 are uh, uh you know an early settler do you want to just tell us why you guys wanted to you know uh, buy a village and, and, and what are you planning on building? We actually want to actually facilitate for a lot of our holders in Africa to, you know, have a metaverse presence as well. Um, we're also working with the likes of uh, Ethereum and IOTEX to bring their digital identity and their health data into a single avatar. So Ethereum is creating soul bound NFTs that represent their digital data that um, could be either health healthcare data or anything else, but in a private and secure way. So that's essentially the whole notion of Web3 is to get away from these big tech companies owning all your data. You're now able to do that in a secure and private way and monetize that as well through your avatar. And we want people to be able to socialize with their avatars in these metaverse worlds. So Ubuntu Land is perfect for this. They'll be able to participate in the entire ecosystem, all the events that you guys are running, be able to also have all the different customizations for wearables. 
Um, then this is something that we've been looking to get all our air shareholders from uh, THC NASA as well. Um, you know, airdropping them the equivalent of the Ethereum NFTs into Ubuntu land and having them to have a social presence. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting all the different tribes and villages <laughs> together as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, likewise, we're equally as, as excited. And, uh, we, we, you know, just to end off, we have run out of time. Um, where could people find more about transhumanism coin? How do you learn more about the space? Get involved. Uh, where should they go? Yeah, go to transhumancoin.finance and, uh, you know, join our Telegram, buy transhuman coin. Um, you can find out more about transhumanism at transhumanism.com.au. And, uh, yeah, feel free to find me on LinkedIn as well. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Peter. That's Peter Zing. And uh, we really are grateful that you have taken part in this episode and uh, we'll be um, announcing soon, uh, you know, when the Transhumanism Village will be going live. So, Peter, thanks so much and uh, have a great evening in Australia. That's such a Thanks a lot, Mick.